the thing. Hold the product. It's been pretty good, you know. Bones, don't you remember that? You probably don't. It's very hard to sort of get the ball and say what you want to say. Being slated, what a terrible racket! And then later on, as it, as you know, the years went by, it was always like, sort of quoted as being one of the sort of classic Stones albums. In November of 1969, three months after the hippie Peace and Love gathering at Woodstock, the Rolling Stones decided to mark the end of their U.S. tour with a free concert outside of Rolling Stones' home base of San Francisco. The resulting fiasco, at which one concertgoer was murdered, was a drug-addled orgy of violence and bad vibes, much of both provided by the Hells Angels who'd been hired to act as security guards. Aldermont was dissected at great length in a special 16-page Rolling Stone report, which laid considerable blame on the previously sacrosanct Rolling Stones themselves. One of Rolling Stone's great, you know, first journalistic, uh, you know, achievements was the coverage of the Altamont disaster. You know, they really went all out to cover that. They treated it like it was Watergate. I think Rolling Stone, given the fact he was in their back yard, so to speak, was very hysterical because this had happened. And if it had happened somewhere else, I don't think it would have been as important to Rolling Stone. It would have been important, but it wouldn't have hit the emotional gut quite so much if it had been in the East Coast, maybe. The music was the only thing at that point that was going to distract people from all of this uh, very heavy stuff that was going on around. You know, it wasn't so much action as vibes, you know, the famous hippie vibes. And they'd all coming down right there. Uh, you know, from all different angles, you know. and so uh, it does give you a certain reason to keep playing and play good. Yes. <laughs> they kind of really reacted, the Rolling Stone writers, I think, very violently against the Rolling Stones, the group. Played as good as we could try to cool it as much as we can <laughs> and uh, and then you go to like the touch wood and hope for the best you know and get out getting out of there like you guys got out of Vietnam you know hanging from the helicopters you know what I mean Ooh, baby hey nothing like a murder modern science uh, photography photography and the fact that it works on me <laughs> Albert Watson says this photo defines is the spirit, the essence of rock and roll life. What do you think about that? It did that day. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, well, I mean, Albert has got to go, see, a photographer's got to go and try and distill one particular moment, boom, and, and it's got to mean a myriad of things. I and mean, it has to him and it has to other people. So maybe he's right. But, you know, you're asking the subject of the picture, that's very difficult for me to say because, yeah, I guess it does, you know. Uh, uh, you know, am I pretending? When I'm the subject, I do, unless it comes to putting on halos and fairy wings, pretty much what the photographer wants, you know, I'll get the message, you know. He's like, oh, you want this? <laughs> <laughs> So you can just pull this out, sort of, out of your Well, it's your being. because there's a lot of me, right? I mean, it's not difficult. Uh, I mean, all I'm doing is killing myself smoking. I do more, I, you know, I do, I go through two packs on photograph sessions. I mean, maybe <laughs> under my own, maybe half a pack a day. I don't, you know, it's, they're killing me, these photographers. What am I supposed to say that I'm nice about them? They're killing me, you know? <laughs> Pigs. But I love them, anyway. I love their work, and I'm glad to be a milestone in their career. Right. Thank you very much.